it uh, will be fought out between Team Peps and a one-man army. Uh, of course, the former coming into this with a better map score, which is absolutely irrelevant. Uh, but I said it anyway. Uh, what is relevant, of course, is that this is a rematch, as we already said. 3-0 is uh, how Team Peps won that first bout. And they played uh, a very close winners match against Enz uh, as well, taking them to map 5. I mean, this rendition of the Peps roster has been looking really clean. It's a difference of night and day from stage 1 to stage 2. Yeah, it's been a pretty big difference, and they only made a couple of changes. Uh, they ended up actually losing Hybrid and Cronus, and the two players they brought in to replace them with XOD All and Level 1 Crook, they've really shown up. I think as well, uh, sadly, having to see Ben Best take the bench for this one, Tread has been able to take up that helm really beautifully, and the Sarissa play has been way more dominant to be able to have that team work. We also saw, of course, uh, very few changes in the one main army roster from stage one to stage two, but uh, it's still kind of pretty much the same core. Uh, not kind of, it's actually exactly the same core. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing has changed. Uh, a lot of people do rate this team very high, though. Yeah, and the big core being Avo, Theomatic, and Ollie, you may recognize a lot of these players from, well, maybe their time on the bench, and but, you know, <laughs> to be part of those big teams is still huge. Like, uh, Strabor played for Sheer Cold. Ollie, I think, has the biggest uh, year last year, competed with Super Shy, but most notably known for his time on Team Finland at the Overwo Overwatch World Cup, finishing top three. And then Avo was on Team Peps uh, and for the all all for one French championship, flash ops, contenders, like all of these guys have contenders experience and are making their way onto the bench for bigger teams. So there's so much potential on this team that is still developing. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope they took a lot of notes from that first match uh, they played against Team Peps because that was quiet, the crushing defeat they suffered on the hands of Peps. Let's see if they can run it back, get that revenge match and qualify for the main event. They are ready and so are we, so let's walk us through the maps. Awesome. Already going into our first match, bros. This is such a quick day already. Yeah. Uh, team Peps versus a one-man army, but uh, as I mentioned, Avo is facing his former team. Uh, Avo was on Team Peps at some point last year. Yeah, he was, and I think when you take a look at this matchup, not only is there that sort of revenge story, but also the chance for a one-man army to get that revenge after being 3-0'd in that very first day of groups. It's all going to start off here on Nepal, and then we've got Eichenwald and Esperanza following up after that, but I feel like when it comes down to some of these map choices and maybe what we expect out of these teams, uh, it's going to be a very Arisa-heavy meta. And you go to an Arisa-based control map like Nepal, very, very flat, and it's going to be great. Four team peps, and they got a pretty huge roster, a substitute on, on every role where it's been Naga and XOD all starting. That'll continue to be the case. And I just love to see the Naga redemption arc. And I know that's been a long time coming from his time on Paris Eternal. Now he gets to prove that he is that star player and he's that star tracer. Yeah, and he really has been, too. I think one of the most impressive things about Naga has just been how much he's really worked on his map awareness on Tracer. So I think being able to see the duel between Naga as well as Skitza is going to be really, really fun to watch. They're going to use the Symmetra Teleporters to get out of spawn, but both end up going back to... Or sorry, Skitza is going to go back to the Tracer. Naga's going to stay on the Symmetra. I'm super excited to see this. And this is cool because in this lane, the Symmetra can teleport your team to the other side and you can pincer from both ends. So one man army, you just have to be careful of their back and you don't have to commit to that Symmetra teleporter. You can even place it and force them to look behind and that could be your window to engage in. And here is that window of engage for Team Peps already pressuring a one man army back to their doors without really taking much damage. Tret's placing that shield beautifully right at the door so one man army can't do good damage to it and Skitza can shut down on the flank. I, this is what you can expect to see out of his teleporter plays because you kind of bamboozle a one-man army as soon as they move in. They are back, though, to be able to take this fight really quickly, but it's all about being able to work up to some of these alts. I feel like when we see Ollie being able to have this amplification matrix, a one-man army is just seconds away from being able to try to grab this point back. Yeah, Ollie 
from his time at the World Cup. I wonder just how much you get to learn from amazing players from Team Finland and if you can bring that leadership to here. And so far, Team Peps, well, it doesn't really matter who's leading on the other team when you just got ExoDL that gets to lay back, have a little vacation, pick off now a second person in this fight. The Omatic gets an immortality, but it really doesn't matter. Team Peps in the driver's seat. Uh, this is like just another ExoDL show. ExoDL, this stage has been able to show us this really dominant Sojourn in Cassidy, and it doesn't really matter what he's playing. It's always expecting like one to two picks with those railgun charges when that overclock is active, being able to put on so much pressure to the enemy team. We are going to see a one man army take a couple of swaps. So it is going to be Ollie heading over to the Cutico instead, which will just be able to get the Cutico into the mix a a little bit faster than the Baptiste that, well, you have the verticality, can't make the same mobility changes as this Kiriko. And you can't play front to back against a Sigma. You want to take those off angles. And I think Ollie would, would love to help Avo uh, have a more commanding corner to take against that Sigma. Dead Eye gets canceled there by the accretion, or maybe it just got uh, let loose, didn't really hit anything. Team Peps have all the ults in the world. Using the overclock just to pressure a one-man army back. And Team Peps have the point. So they don't really care how long this fight goes. It's a one-man army that are left with one of their last chances. And Avo is dead. And Skits uh, with a great pulse. It gets negated by the immortality of level one Crook. Now Team Peps using what's left in the bank. Tread jumped off the map. I'm uh, not sure. I feel like there would have been credit to a player on one-man army if he got speared or no, something. I'm pretty know. sure that was actually just like using the flux and maybe forgetting that you need to have some ground under you. There's no way you're in this level of competition and you're just falling off the edge. I refuse listen, to believe it. Listen, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Wait, we have, oh. wait, hold on. We it's have it. Play. Yeah. No, see, look. He's, oh, he's wait, he, the ult. Wait, he is silly. He is silly. Okay, I you're told right. you. He used the ult and credit. then he just fell off. Listen, it's fine if you win the round anyway, which is definitely what happened a couple of seconds later. We well, can still meme about it now. Uh, you know, I gotta say, though, outside of maybe that fumble with the Gravitic Flux at the end there, something that's been really impressive about Trent and their role in this Team Pep's roster is how flexible he's been able to be. He's played the Ramatra, the Sigma, the Orisa, the Winston in their matches so far this stage, and you're seeing that rotation in full force as it's going to be the Ramatra on this round. And I'm seeing Avo on Sojourn, which is what I wanted him to swap to last time because Tread was on Sigma, and that would have been great for Avo to uh, charge up and use those off angles a bit better when you have more mobility. And you see that Avo's already having a bigger impact. Team Peps can't deal with all the angles that a one-man army is taking around them, so they'll have to retreat, and, you know, silver lining for them is that they didn't lose their Orisa. The Omatic got low at some points, but or Tread got low at some points, so Team Peps are still stuck in this corner. Now, Team Peps can come back into this, and, like, I think where their Orisa plays from on this point is once you've captured the objective, you just, you have a lot of agency to try to take a bit more to the enemy team and I mean this is going to be another setback is like the Arisa space that the Amata created allowed for Avo to be able to get that pick onto Exodeal and even still you can see how Avo feels so confident to play up close to a one-man army uh, before you know before Team Peps truly have to back off. I, I'm not a fan of Team Peps uh, sticking to this high ground as soon as they come out they can get speared by Theomatic now there's a shield so that helps out a little bit but there's so many angles that a one-man army can take around them if this doesn't work for team peps maybe trying main but this power position of the high ground is has been big for avo he finally gets forced off so team peps have done step one of taking back uh nepal village xod although responds with picks of his own the ant matrix from crook sets up this cassidy for success and even if you try to escape xod will slap you around Oh, I mean, sometimes those windows are just great for your Cassidy setup. You didn't even need to take an off angle with that if you're going to have level one crook behind you. Skitza, 
You walked into that. <laughs> you actually just decided to blink it to Exodial's face and uh, go back to spawn, I guess. But Exodial, like, one of the reasons why we see a lot of this Cassidy with the Baptiste is that both of them can play together. If you have the Sojourn, you want the Kiriko so that she can swift step over to you and provide some healing once you do see that power slide in. But this Baptiste and Cassidy, they have a much more static backline presence, but that's where you can see that amplification matrix and mortality field really come into play. Good assist by Shrebor because Schizo was looking like they were gonna lose that tracer duel to Naga after using the recall in such a vulnerable position. So Team Peps choosing the Deadeye to force a one-man army back to their shelter. Shred will uh, be brawling close to range because he has the Annihilation and FD God will give him the sound barrier so that he can overstay his welcome. But Shredboar responded with his own sound barrier and uh, Shred is looking very overwhelmed but has trust in his support so maybe a little too much. The latest Annihilation I've ever seen. And now a one-man one army, now that they have the punish on the tank, the rest are history. It's really good progress from Team Peps to at least match that of one-man army, but this could potentially be the final fight for a one-man army to tie up this map and bring us into Shrine to finish it off. Uh, but they don't have anything. You're looking at Ollie to get this Kitsune rush online while Team Peps once again make this upper approach, uh, but it's gonna have to come up quickly so at least it's here, but Team Peps, they've got to play this smart. Kitsune rush to help the Omatic, and he's just staring down the barrel of this Ant Matrix, trying to take any cover that he can, but he bought enough time, and a one-man army, they took advantage of their tank being bait, and slaughtered the rest of Team Peps, and that was the last fight for Nepal Village, will be heading into round three, Exodial. He's a one-man army himself, but uh, not in a 1v5. Tread will maybe have one last touch, but... Yeah, we'll be settling this on Shrine. This ends now. Uh, I'm, agree I'm in agreement with you. I think that the high ground approaches from Team Peps just put them in such vulnerable positions, especially if they were tracking that the Kitsune Rush would be online, then I feel like you wouldn't want to put yourself to have that amplification matrix, fall for that Arisa bait, maybe <laughs> just like jump down to the high ground uh, uh, quickly, but it requires you to be able to have those cooldowns on like, like the amp it up in order to make that rotation. I think something else that like might have even been better to have is something like the Symmetra. It worked out so well on Sanctum, and we've seen those types of plays still be very impactful on a map like Village. So as we open the gates for Shrine, I'm interested to see if that is going to stay the course. It's not just the Symmetra teleport is out of spawn for both teams to get the Tracers out. An early hinder onto Avo. Both Cassidy's. Out. You don't really need the movement as much on this map. It's very, very small and already ExoDL proving that he's alpha. He's already forced Avo to drop off the high ground. Team Peps will now cycle towards the point. It is now unlocked. And Shred and Theomatic are going to be mirrored on the Orisa this time. It's not a Ram versus Orisa, where in the close range point like this, the Spears, they can get a very valuable stun. And Avo and Exodeal, yes, the point is very small, but that means you have to stay clear of those Spears because you're going to be the most vulnerable target to go after, whether it's from the opposing Tracer or the Orisa that can uh, start Javelin spinning towards you the way that the Omatic is. Avo is being healed back to full. Skits is getting comfortable on the flank. Team Peps have captured the point first. They got to 20%, but now that Nog is missing, they don't have that flank pressure. And this is where Skitsa and friends of One Man Army can take over. And Oli got the Kitsune Rush. Level 1 Crook mashed as well, but uh, XODL is not able to put, output as much damage. The Omatic is getting low, though, and it forces the sound barrier out of Trebor or Strebor in a one-man army with the Deadeye doing their best and Team Peps are simply not dying for a one-man army to, con to uh, contribute that much to the fight and for it to take this long to develop is surprising but a good 45% start for Team Peps. I mean, like, we saw the Katsune rush immediately, the Lucio sound bears are both online for both sides, and the fight was so long that we ended up seeing all of those ultimates get traded. Uh, now, though, like, uh, Exodeal maybe made himself a bit vulnerable having to go for something like the High Noon, but we're looking at the Amatic with a bit more of that advantage, having the Terra Surge online, 
But yeah, T Press walked away with almost 50%. They're pretty happy with that, and Naga could really open things up with a pulse bomb kill. Ideally. And yeah, Suzu can help against the pulse. Immortality is a bit better in that regard, but the timing is everything for someone like Ollie and level one crook against these pulse bombs. At least Skitza will be there in a second. One man army just needs to keep one toe at this point. And the Omatic use the uh, terror surge to get the fortify to live through that Naga pulse bomb. A heads up play. Kitsune rush to follow up. Level one crook is 10% behind, and that could be a world of a difference. And it was. A one man army got to keep the point. They forced team pass into a corner but retaliation is imminent here's a kitsune rush from level one crook fd god waiting for the right moment to pop that sound barrier naga he can play selfish play around the mega pack it's tread that you have to support and really he doesn't even need the sound barrier and being able to conserve that for the next fight is huge for team peps it really is because this could be last fight if one a man army they like have a chance to come back into this one win and then take this round in the map so team peps they cannot allow that having the sound barrier means that they will be able to match at least strepper's beat even get it a little bit later to stagger it so that gives them a bit of that barrier advantage but team peps they can also buy some time exodeal has the high noon available and could just hit it now to keep one man army from encroaching onto this point and then we would also be in last fight territory for them exo deal now that a one man army has come out of their shelter now the dead eye opportunity you talked about has been gone you don't want to be hit by a spear or get flanked by a tracer when you least suspect it did save Avo. It's a 5v4 to win the map for Team Peps, and they have all the ults in the world. Starting with a sound bear, Terror Surge is plan B, and Naga with the pulse is just the cherry on top. Oh my god, I wrapped that Naga with three. Now it's gonna sound like the stream is out of sync because I called the Naga pop off a little too early. A one man army will fall over, and Team Peps will take map one. You were just looking into your crystal ball. You were saying that Naga was looking for the redemption arc. You had it on the mind. Naga was like feeling the good vibes and ended up getting the 3k to close out the map. But uh, it's so unfortunate that the sound barrier wasn't enough to be able to save Avo in that final fight because we could have extended that even further. But missing that one critical player meant that it was a 5v4 with the extra over health on the whole team. And that was all she wrote. But I, I think this was a very competitive map for our first map of the series so maybe it won't be so team peps favored yeah it was very very close i think one man army looked best on village they had ava on the high ground they finally looked dominant when he was in a prefer uh, preferential position one man uh, army did get uh, kicked into uh, when it came to sanctum that's where they tied it up here on village and then when it came down to shrine uh just very small things. Skitza got shut down on the flank once or twice when he was on Tracer. Avo got picked, didn't get the sound barrier as you mentioned. And it was pretty toe-to-toe -to -toe from there on out. Um, I think Naga had a bigger impact on the Tracer overall, I and mean, hence the pop-off we called at the end. But also to be fair, Team Peps had like five ults at the end. Um, they were able to extend a lot of fights. Even the very first one, Team Peps got up to 45%, just drawing out the fight as long as they can. So one man army just have to Improve the focus from an A minus to an A plus, and then these fights will uh, just overall control will be better in their favor. I think it's hard too, though, because on Shrine we actually got our first glimpse of what the Arisa versus Arisa matchup could look like. While a one-man army has been pretty one-dimensional in terms of running the Arisa comp and then switching what Avo is playing between the Cassidy and the Sojourn, Team Peps played Sigma, Ramatra, and Arisa. And so I wonder if that trend is going to maintain as we look into some of our next maps. But one thing's for sure is they're not afraid to change it up to feel like they can take a map advantage by having a compositional advantage. And we'll see if this next map will give an advantage to a one-man army. This is their pick where... Wickenfold is pretty hybrid. Well, yes, it is hybrid, but it's hybrid in the case of what comps <laughs> you can run. Because you think, oh, with the high grounds that reach uh, to the sky, you're like, oh, oh, me high, me see high ground, me go dive. You don't have to play dive on this map. A lot of teams still play Orisa. It's just uh, more of a journey. It's an adventure to cross all the way inside of Castle, go up the stairs and run around. But this is what the teams do. They practice the macro on this map.
Yeah, you could just go on the Grand Tour. You still have high ground access for sure, but it just takes a little bit longer to get there. I still think that Team Peps is the type of team that if they see the opportunity to go Winston and try to get the jump on an Arisa Cobb from a one-man army, then we could really see that sort of counter strategy come through to play to that advantage of having that high ground and then maybe switch back to something on point C. But I feel like that begs the question of, is it better for a team to change their compositions based on the map that they're playing or just stick to something that has been working for them and they get to really practice that to a top level well i wonder if the composition will change how about the roster composition <laughs> at the very well, that least that sure does something <laughs> yoham will come in over level one crook which tells me i don't know double flex whatever that could mean but it, like i said team peps have a very huge roster they have a substitute on every role so they have a wealth of strategy that can come from this that's really interesting because we haven't seen a whole lot of Johan in this stage. So being able to come in here, maybe we see a different look on something like the Baptiste. Maybe if you want to run a Winston, we've seen a couple of dive compositions be enabled like something like a Brigitte and an Ana backline. Uh, so I, I think a really exciting opportunity to see what Johan can bring to this team. And uh, we finally got the stats uh, between the Tracer duel between Naga and Skitza. And actually, Naga, yes, did out damage by about 800. But what's interesting is the deaths. Um, Skitza has double the deaths of Naga from 6 to 3, which, yeah, confirms that Skitza has to be more careful on the flank because ExoDL is just that guy. Uh, going from anyone from Sojourn to Cassidy, Skitza has to just be uh, playing his life a bit better. It's uh, it's really tough, I think, too, when you're facing up against a uh, tracer like Naga. Uh, maybe you're getting a little bit more support. Like, once again, Naga's really been working on his map awareness, so it might just be beating uh, Skitza to the punch on some of these health packs as well. But we get a chance to, I think, see that duel once again as a one-man army gets set up on the defensive Eichenfold. It's going to be their classic Arisa composition with Avo playing the Sojourn, which I think was the best look from Avo that we saw in that very first map. But Team Peps coming out here with an Arisa comp of their own. Exodial on the Cassidy, and Johem's going to play the Kiriko. Sojourn versus Cassidy. And since Team Peps are going to take this inch by inch, it's okay to have... Uh, a ranged hit scan that's gonna be less mobile. You don't need the Sojourn unless you're playing like this aggressive off angle where you need to reposition at a moment's notice. So ExoDL will be escorted by the whole family of Team Peps and can also play around this mini pack if things get a little hairy, but Team Peps so far have gotten a tick for free. A one-man army uh, waited for Skitza to get the health pack to get some flame pr pressure established. And as soon as Skitza was healed up, a one-man army did take back the point momentarily. But Team Peps, this is a brawl that is not favoring Tread right now. At least he had the javelin spin so he can buy himself some time. But on this high ground is Avo, and this is a power position that XODL would be at a disadvantage against. So how will Avo be forced down? Well, he's just going to reposition position team peps getting a little too close for his comfort still gets hit a little bit by that mag grenade so gets hindered for a quick second but the sound barrier is already online for team peps to extend the fight <laughs> just the fight takes so long that you're getting Katsune rushes, you're getting sound barriers, but Naga and Shred will work together to finish off those targets. That's what we needed. Focus fire so that these fights don't take for years, but great job by Team Peps at the end. That was great. You had to use t both support ultimates, which is a little bit expensive, but it's so worth it to know that you now have a 4 minute 45 time bank to work with heading into the second point of Icon Vault. So where things get a little interesting who's going to be able to get the high ground control a one-man army is already going to get set up there but do team peps want to match them there maybe leave naga on this cart to keep pushing it uh, force one man army to come to them yeah, there's two approaches. Go inside of Castle or push the car and wait for the defense to come to you. But Team Peps play out in the open. It will be susceptible to damage. XOTL had a dead eye up the stairs and fell off the map trying to maybe tumble away from Skitza. So that's kind of hilarious. I hope we get a replay of that. Meanwhile, Team Peps have made some progress. Tread is pretty awful on the Orisa. Terror Surge from 
the automatic. May Team Pep's pretty low. With Johan missing, that was maybe an opportunity for a one-man army, but Team Pep's live on. Is he switching? We've got a switch coming out from Avo, but the Amatic is gonna stay on the Arissa. I feel like that was a huge misplay to go for that Terra Surge when the rest of your team wasn't there to capitalize. Everybody on Team Peps was quite low, so maybe the Amatic just going for a big hero play, but it would have been nice to have that for this situation where you see all of these squishies sitting on the bridge. Oh, Terra Surge from Tread against the Sound Barrier. GG probably should have cancelled that Terra Surge uh, two seconds earlier. Maybe it would have been fine, but Team Peps had the advantage here. Or, uh, sorry, a one-man army had the advantage there. Sound Barrier's traded. Team Peps still trying to hold on to this bridge, and Avo got out in the open away from his Lucio, so Team Peps have been really good at punishing Avo, and you even noticed that on Nepal. Team Peps get the chase down too, getting Skitza and maybe even Strebor. He manages to get away, but Team Peps will have to fight one more time before point B. It's gonna be layered Kitsune rushes. Okay, Kitsune rush, one-man army! The Obatic needs all the yelling he can get. He might have been in the corner and out of LOS of his support. So I'm not 100% sure, but Team Peps quite literally bulldozed them and this castle door. Now already heading into the castle with four minutes in the time bank. So you're feeling really confident of your Team Peps to be able to push this all the way to the finish line. And so Dio is coming up on the high noon, has the Deadeye that he can activate as like a zoning ultimate if you really want to, but it'll push them all the way back, uh, maybe even force them out into these really strange positions so that Team Peps can finish up the job. Another sound barrier on the docket as well as a pulse bomb from Naga. So uh, they do have to step back for now, but FT God will be coming back soon. Skitza did an amazing job shutting down that momentum. First, he picked off FD God, I believe, and XODL was late to the rotation to escape out of this attack. And a one man army even claiming more kills, and every kill you get is obviously more ult charge. And with Team Peps going into point C, with, uh, they started with three and a half minutes, one man army need every dub they can get. And this is going to be one way that they can get back on that ultimate rotation. They got a little out, out of sync there. The Amatic using that Terra Surge a little too early. Maybe not having necessarily the best answers to what Team Peps were throwing. But One Man Army, it's all about continuing to find value from your ultimates and seeing if that can turn the tables. But the fact that Team Peps have this sound barrier advantage, Strubber is in a race against the clock to get his own online. Team Peps have Theomatic in an off-angle position, and Theomatic has to be careful. He has the, of course, the Terror Surge, which will give him Fortify, and okay. Oh, Skitsa thought he was at a safe distance away from the Pulse Bomb and just watched it go off in slow motion. Not ideal. Naga now with two, even takes care of the Immortality, giving Team Peps free reign to kill the rest of a one-man army. And just the one fight hold was all this defense could do. And this is now going to be a very intimidating time bank for Team Peps. Over two minutes is so much time to work with when you consider the hybrid point A. You get a chance to get quick resets with how close those spawns are, and that's plenty of time to get ultimates online. So Team Peps are definitely playing at an advantage. For right now, as we switch sides though, maybe a one-man army is able to match that, but it felt like they were just always on the back foot, whether it came to their ultimate rotations, when it came down to actually being able to have good answers for Team Pepsi's game plans. It felt like they were kind of out of touch with how to approach that. Yeah, and Naga also went crazy at the end, as he usually does. He's True. The Tracer, which is all the experience, whether it's in the Pro League or even just in Overwatch in general. And Naga's been around for years, so for Skitza to have to either check him, mark him, make sure that Naga doesn't have as much freedom while also Skitza pressuring Yoham and FD God. Because on Kiriko, if you can force that teleport out as a tracer, that is huge. Or even Suzu at the very best, that can open up the fight engagement. That's what you initiate off of. And if Skitza can't make that happen, then that's where a one-man army may not have the best of opportunities to take fights. Now, Skitza did a good job helping them win the first fight of point C, but then afterwards uh, didn't work out. Let's see how a one-man army are going to approach this next offense. Yeah, same shot.
There's Luch holding left. Hey. It's Kaskari. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no, it's Kas okay. Kaskari. I'm right swinging from right side. Yeah, can you guys well, actually I mean, put some pressure on that side? Yeah, yeah. Right? Good. Right walking left. in two. One. Oh, I'm low. I'm low. Yeah, I got you. I'm still walking. There, no one's left. Watch out for them pushing yeah, out. Yeah. Left. Can we swing left yeah, side? Yeah. You got one space. Just chill, chill here, guys. Chill, chill here. Yeah, I want to go right side now. Cast some point. Okay. Oh, no, right. no, 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 no. Universal. Keep right. on Wait, my own. No, 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 no. Cast a nade. Cast a nade. Oh. I have. I need pee. Oh, there is a timer. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. When Ava's on Widow, everyone is like, okay, stop. I need to focus. No one's <laughs> speak. <laughs> And it was like, we heard all this planning, so we wanted to tune in, and of course, as soon as we did, everyone was silent to watch if Avalo could get that pick, and that was funny. <laughs> hey, you gotta be locked in and loaded to get into the map. It's all serious business here. This is a spot in the main event on the line for both of these teams, and if you lose here, you lose out. Especially on all those like juicy championship points that are up for grabs in the main event too, alongside that money. But yeah, I think like it's really interesting is like even after we had the silence to focus on that first pick, they were talking immediately about positioning. Where is Team Peps defending from? Talk about them being on the left side, have to worry about that health pack room and trying to take the territory that way. And I've always loved that type of approach because you get a chance to stay in that cover for like the health pack room as well as maybe even going through the tiny building on the left of point so yeah uh and we're just i know this isn't a cast or listen end guys we we know we're not the interesting ones here but we had a disconnect from team pep side so we'll be checking in with them but um i think just both teams are trying to recognize where each other's either sojourn or cassidy's are most importantly that cassidy and even in the last fight or the last round team peps won the point because they as soon as, soon as avo dropped from the high ground they just ran after him and we're gonna see them do a lot more running as we get back into game it is going to be Cassidy on both sides, though, so no sojourn on the defense for Team Peps. Uh, but you're, that's why you kind of look at a little bit more of that static presence. But they had to back out, though, because poor Tread is the one that ended up getting yeeted out of the server. And so you have to give up this point right away if you don't want to get caught out like that. So FD God, Naga both going down. Feels like these are early, easy picks for one-man army to chase. Uh, it's so unfortunate uh, that it's going to be your tank that got the disconnect yeah. there. Yeah, that's unfortunate because you know the potential that both these teams have to brawl it out for, for the ages. Like, growing out gray hair, that's how long the fight <laughs> is taking. So unfortunate for Team Peps. Now, one-man army have already established themselves on the high ground. Be careful how these spears are being used, but Avo, late to the rotation. He needs to be on board, and really, Theomatic has to escort him as well if, he, if he's slower to the punch. So, Team Peps with a great punishing opportunity there. They're going to drop and see what else they can farm. This is a good place to at least get the defense to dig their heels into the sand because yeah, that card is kind of in a good position where you can play on that high ground, but then you can also sort of play towards the spawn room doors because of how far that card has moved. Like, it's just going to take a little bit of time for the one-man army to get there. Look at how sneaky they're trying to be. So sneaky. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're there. sitting here to avoid the poke and one-man army able to get to the high ground. And this will force Team Peps to play this cat and mouse game. Theomatic down the armor. Team Peps obviously don't want to push in there until they get terrorists. Speaking of that, Theomatic thought he could just zone Team Peps off of that, but at least brings out the sound barrier. And what a Suzu! Oh my god, from Molly to save the team from the pulse bomb. And Tread with the Terra Surge once the rest were too low, once the Suzu was out, once the sound barrier was expended, that was a Team Peps fight. That was so smart. Naga originally was looking for an opening where the Suzu had been used because if you hit that pulse bomb in that tiny room, that is everybody on one man army going down. Instead, you bait out the Suzu, allow Tread to use that Terra Surge instead, and then everybody is low enough for you to just walk in there and grab them. Exodeal at the spawn door is getting two with the dead eye, and that's gonna be another big reset. You look at over a five minute time bank that one man army had started out that second point with, and it's whittling away slowly. 
That was such a sick play. Like, XOG all on the high ground with the dead eye. Team Peps, the rest of them, evicting them from that house. And they walk into the dead eye. At that point, you're like, I'm hearing the whistles and the tumbleweeds and whatnot. I got bigger problems. I got multiple problems. Got 99 of them. But uh, yeah, Team Peps is definitely one of them. So. Team Peps now on the high ground. They can have the jump at any moment. They get to dictate when this next fight will go down as one man army just staying in shelter and relying on Theomatic to get progress. So Team Peps just can't let this go forever. And Naga is going to be the one to contest. So what is Skitza's reaction going to be? Or even Ollie, who can be on that off angle with Skitza if they want to go for a nasty flank. Instead, a one man army are going to climb up to the high ground, see if they can make Team Peps on Glossy. And. Uh, a one-man army dropped right into the hands of Team Peps, and this is quite a dance. Yeah, it, it, this is just like, a, it's oh like God, almost tread. like, tread. <laughs> tread, he's already dead. Leave him alone. Oh my God. I like at, at this point, like you have to look at this and go, like Team Peps are gonna have to be the ones that fumble if One Man Army want to get past this. It's gonna be one minute forty-five when One Man Army come back in. All of us switched over to the Sojourn. The Amatic is the first player that might be up to an ultimate with Ollie very close behind with the Kitsune rush. But Team Peps, they still have the advantage. They've got five to their two ultimates. I love the swap out of Avo. Needs more escapability. He's finding himself late to the rotation or isolated without a Kiriko or a Lucio to help out. So this will do a lot. And when I said that, that not talking about the Terra Surges, the Omatic fully charging that down to like two health. And Team Peps will finish him off along with the rest of a one-man army, bringing them down to a minute five. There is actually a push from Skitza. Shout out to our observers catching that, getting it past the bridge, sure, but a one-man army are still losing these fights. It doesn't matter. Team Peps can still just play up with these four alts towards the spawn if they want to, but they want to pull one-man army out into the open just like this, because that's where Team Peps can get the drop on them or force them to have to play tiny Overwatch in the castle room, and you don't really want to be on the receiving end of either of the ultimates that's going to be coming through from Team Peps. Even this high ground approach feels so risky when Naga's got the pulse bomb and Yoham has this Kitsune rush ready to lay down on top of the bridge. Kitsune Rush, one man army by Yoham as well, but he's so low, so I think has to use the barrier. Shepard's gonna use his leg, but it saves Theomatic. It's an all out brawl on this bridge. Theomatic first to drop Naga with the pulse to end it all. But someone is still pushing the cart that maybe Skitza to keep this alive. Five seconds and he's gonna leave someone has to touch and he was trying to leave because of the dead eye and skitsa will get back to start over time so your c9 curse didn't happen this time necra but uh team pefs are still almost a little too comfortable <laughs> they stopped moving shred is pretty bm in that regard a one-man army will keep touching as much as they can when it comes to overtime and not really able to get the ball rolling i think they've killed maybe two this fight but it won't be enough team peps are just that dominant and they will just go to match point Team Peps are making this look easy, and this is what you hope to see out of a team that is considered one of the best in EMEA right now. The roster changes that they made in between stages one and two feel like have really paid off for them, and we get a chance to see the fruits of that labor in a matchup like this. We're seeing history repeat itself as we already saw at the beginning of this group at One Man Army. They've got a lot of work cut out for them if they want to bring it back in this series. Yeah, just great coordination out of Team Peps, like recognizing when Theomatic is low, Naga will redirect his attention there. Uh, I think Skitza has been living more, but isn't going for the big plays because he wants to play his life better. Like he is trying to be on the flank, but he's not bringing Ollie on the Kiriko with them. He's not having Shreb or the Lucio maybe facilitate that. If anything, I think the supports are trying to take better care of Avo, who was forced to go to the Sojourn to have better mobility escapability. This is the tumbled i thought this was a tumble maybe he tumbled off the map but it's actually just naded himself so thank you replay ops for catching that <laughs> I think the face on the Cassidy said it all when that actually happened. But I, we got a bit of a glimpse into the communication from One Man Army when we were looking at their attack start. It felt like we continued to see some of that miscommunication, maybe even just some 
lack of coordination when it came to those team fights. Uh, not everybody being on the same page of where to attack from. Even on I think the final fight of their attack push, poor Theomatic was on his own. And well, we saw like too. <laughs> that's wild. But like really was on his own when like Strebber and Ollie did have to go pocket the Sojourn on an off angle. And speaking of that Sojourn, um, XODL versus Apple. Apple actually outdamaged him, not really by like a lot, like 1K, but the deaths is what is insane to me. Like I already kind of hinted y'all at the Theomatic 12 deaths, but Tread was BMing because he only died once. Like he's like, bro, I'm gonna have to stop moving so you guys know how to actually kill me. So maybe Tread did actually did jump off the map on Sanctum. I'm gonna let that conspiracy theory breathe. And Avo uh, died 12 times versus the X. XODL five times. So Avo needs to be like the Sojourn pick is going to help him a lot, but the whole team needs to be on the same page for rotations. I mean, it's also going to be tough too if like Team Peps are just consistently winning the team fights. We're going to see like a way lower KD ratio for them. And it's it's just tough because I think in this position too, it's not just the team coordination. It's, it's also just like the target focus. When to use ultimates? Are you tracking to have the right responses in time and I think Team Peps are just giving us a master class on how we can actually see these Arisa comps and those the team synergy really working its best. But speaking of the best, Jen, we're gonna get a <laughs> sub for Team Peps and Ben Best now coming into the roster. Uh, Tread has already like given us everything and I'm excited for Ben Best to give us more. Ooh, I'm excited too when you get to and whatever happens. Him. Yeah, we all miss them. And, you know, whatever happens, win or lose, the series isn't over. So Ben Best better show us his best or he's going to be subbed out because Tread, I mean, made that look very easy for Team Peps. Uh, yes, it went to round three Nepal, but uh, Eichenwald was a one-man army's pick. And that's one of the most difficult hybrid maps when it comes to just macro understanding because there's so many ways to approach it and picking which one is best for your situation. It takes a lot of experience. Um, and one-man army really struggled in, in the macro regard. Um, but we'll see now that game is ready if Team Peps will get the sweep and if Ben Best will still be the best. Ben Best feels like the perfect tank to put into the map because on Esperanza we typically see uh, some amount of the Winston dive, some amount of the Arissa, and Ben Best can play both of those heroes. So whether you want to make those quick swaps in the middle of the map, up to you. I think Ben Best can step up to the plate in that regard. But One Man Army has opted to play this Arisa composition more often than not. And it feels like if you try to play literally anything else into that, you're playing from a disadvantage. So we'll see. We'll see yeah. what we got. And... When it comes to me, uh, Ben Best, when I've watched him in the past, it's just been a clash of play styles like within his own team of Ben Best will be more aggressive than his supports are ready for or, or vice versa. And I'm assuming that with all the time they've spent together as a team, or at least the core of this team, that that has been adjusted over time. You're confident to feel Ben Best, to put Ben Best in. And now it's, I, um, now it's push. Ben Best just has to play this from front to back and really rely on Naga to make the big flank plays happen. He's been diffing Skitsa in that regard. Really has. I think one of the things that maybe we do see uh, more of a difference from if Ben Best is playing this role is Tread has been a very aggressive Arissa. So maybe this is going to be a little bit better to mesh those play styles together with Ben Best consistently having an aggressive play style as well. The team now knows to how to properly back that up. But a one-man army, they're playing the Winston here. So they're going to have a lot of mobility. It's about punishing that. When the Winston jumps in, Team Peps have to be ready in order to try to grab that pick. And Theomatic is playing very safe with his dives. He's really just placing the bubble and contesting the bot. Ideally, you're not going to want to just mess around with the Orisa. He wants to dive after XODL. That's the big win condition. But look at the way that Team Pets are playing. They're all stacked together. You can't go after XODL without Ben Best running after you. 
but maybe the punish will be to isolate Ben Best with the bubble. There's many ways that Theomatic can approach these fights as a Winston, um, just taking advantage of, hey, this is a tank being subbed in, so things could be looking weaker just at the beginning of the map. A one-man army have to be reading how they're playing together. Yeah, and what's really tough if you do put the Winston bubble down is Kiriko doesn't necessarily want to swift step into that bubble in order to help out the Arisa with the healing. It doesn't really matter though if everybody is dead, but just something to keep in mind if the Omatic is going to try to take that duel front to back, starting with Ben Best's Arisa. But as we get this card, like, rolling, it's been rolling the whole time. There really hasn't been a standstill for this push bot. So we might just see Team Peps end up getting the the checkpoint now there's gonna be maybe a last second recontest no they just want to take this corner yeah they just want to take the tough. corner they, maybe Theomatic could have jumped in he was at the window maybe Skitza could have stalled but team peps are on the high ground so one man army playing this corner just zoning away from the dead eye Skitza yes it's still active and I know that's the big question of is he still dead eyeing and you look and yes Yes, ExoDL still was. Big mistake out of Skitza. One man army now with the Katsune rush. The Suzu beautifully timed out of Ollie to live through the Terra Surge. And FT Gun might have had his barrier canceled by Theomatic. So one man army will put a stop to this push and hopefully send it back where, right where it came from. So we had another battle over the midsection though. So Theomatic uh, having a little bit of uh, pressure. To grab Exodial, saw the kill, went for it, and this will buy One Man Army a bit more time to work with to get this set up. There was an Ajax? Yeah, FD God. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> Thea just like bopped him in the head. But I get it though, right? Like, you already have an advantage, you want to try to keep it. Sadly, you lose the beat there, but, uh, you know, you, you still got the lead. FD God will have yeah. another one. No, no problem. 72 meters off the first push is very crazy. <laughs> so Team Pesh should be more than happy. Just don't get tilted. But these are very experienced players that have competed at the highest level of competition. So I, I'm not worried. Uh, every Lucio is going to go through that. Exodial is going through a lot himself. And a one-man army with the overclock forcing Team Peps into cover. And Avo tries to jump out. And, Theo and uh, Ben Best was on the chase. Now that he's on the Winston, he's trying to show Theomatic how it's done. Yeah, like I said, Ben Best can play both. So being able to show off the Winston look here, and it is very coordinated with the rest of the team. I think they've worked out those synergy issues in between stage one and two, and it's really showing up in a big way here. I think this is also much better for the Kiriko to come in and provide some extra support to the Winston. When Ben Best dives in, places that bubble down, you have your own little sphere of protection while also being able to go in and make more more aggressive dive plays. Naga is on fire. He is making the aggressive plays. Oh my god, if Skitza didn't recall, he would have been domed. Team Peps. Lost Exodio. Alvo gets a crucial double kill, and this part of the map is going to favor that defense of a one man army. They have that nice half high ground that they could sit Avo on, and Ben Best on the Winston has to focus that as much as possible and force out the jump. It's always going to be a bit of this back and forth between the Winstons. Do you want to try to give up your back line? Who's going to dive in first? Right now, where a one-man army is positioned, they're going to have a bit of that upper hand as Team Peps just walk right into them. And Naga tried to throw a pulse and died to Schizo, just dangled and broke his ankles. So he loves Schizo having a closer fight against Naga, but now that Ollie is missing, just this momentum that a one-man army could have had is completely stifled. Yes, Ollie can teleport, hence why a one-man army isn't going too far from this. But the Katsune Rush is what's going to kick things off for the friends of a one-man army. There you go. Uh, one-man army now having used the Primal Rage. They do have an opportunity here to use the Katsune Rush without Team Peps having one. But it's just going to be another standstill before we see those dives engage. But here's the Winston jumps. <laughs> from the top row, XODL with the dead eye is crazy. Apple also escorted the uh, the nade from the Cassidy into the team, forcing only to have to susu. So, 
a one-man army in shambles, just not able to recover after losing Ollie early, and then they didn't even get to Kitsune Rush. So great initiative out of Team Peps. It felt like they had to use the Pulse Bomb and the Overclock to kind of like just just try to stabilize that fight. And that's not what you want to do, having control or just being able to play that reactive style of dive. You do have the Kutsune Rush now, so it feels a little bit better knowing that this card is rending the corner and more into your territory. And Theomatic is already starting this off with a big pick. Yeah, one man army on the flank, taking care of that. And Exodeal was just too stubborn to want to give up that high ground. Uh, so that'll be tough. It goes back and forth where a one man army will be trying to reestablish the bot into the neutral position. Three minutes left, and they're down a significant amount. They haven't been able to win more than one consecutive fight. So that's a problem for them. It is a problem. It's still not unwinnable though and one man army they still have this kitsune rush it's a great engagement tool for this portion of the map the problem is that team peps now have one two and almost a full slate of five ultimates so one man army they've got their work cut out for them but they've got to win this next fight yeah, ollie using the nade or sorry using the suzu against the cassidy nade and that's a very important cooldown to expand and look how quickly team peps dive to capitalize on that moment once the suzu is gone there's not a lot of good answers you know and a sound barrier would be great but strap board didn't then go for it oh, this is gonna be even more progress that team peps get to make and it's even maybe about finishing the map at this point two minutes remaining not very far to go in terms of completing the map and then best they've got the primal rage to throw on top of this kitsune rush you're throwing some quick hands Oh, did I? Oh my god, the Suzu and the Sound Barrier! Now all of Team Peps had to hide from the Deadeye, and Ben Best came out to a full charge. Cassidy ult and lost a chunk of his health from that. But a one-man army using five ultimates just to get the bot control back. They still have to win many more consecutive fights, and it's not necessarily going cleanly in their favor. They're still ExoDL being a menace. I think he might have claimed one or two, but every body Team Peps claims in this moment is uh, a slower return for a one-man army. Ben Best, by the way, is still alive. One-man army are losing just unnecessary progress here. Now 101 meters for Team Peps. You know it's bad when Avo was using the Deadeye and they threw the sound barrier and the Suzu on top of that to try to save that ultimate and it still didn't work because everybody else was dying around them. And again, one man army can't get past this bridge point. If they can't do that, in fact the bot's moving without them by the way, uh, it's, it just doesn't look good. We have sub one minute territory and one man army have to make up about a 70 meter deficit that is a pretty big deficit and the using five volts there like, like you pointed out in just the nicest way possible was such a huge waste because <laughs> it didn't even uh, help them get the bot moving even back to its neutral position it got it halfway and there's many many more fights ahead of a one-man army if they want to make the comeback of a century one-man army i like that they're going on the opposing high ground to not make this totally a power position for team peps but exodio has just been built differently he's uh, a one-man army are struggling but hey some good wins in the 1v1 department giving them some bot control schizo has to continue to be on this bot to keep overtime wick burning and schizo can't be in this fight anymore because the bot's gonna poof away regardless it's really tough too when you're in this position having to play overtime with a dive because that means your tracer can't go on those flanks and it's up to the rest of a one-man army to try to get the setup you can no longer play reactively you've gotta try your best to play from this power position but watch out the overtime wick it is burning yeah the bubble got popped physically and metaphorically a one-man army Backhanded by Naga, who just is 1v3ing the back line. Team Peps are just different. They will take the series in a sweep and in a commanding fashion to put themselves in the main event. Congratulations, Team Peps. Able to get the 3-0 onto a one-man army again. And hopefully being able to right the 
stage that they had in stage one, they were still able to finish it like fifth or sixth, but they won more than that. And I think this is an organization that you hope and expect to see more from just as a team, as you know those players are hungry for it too. So Zoe, I feel like they're off to a really good start, getting a chance to look ahead to the main event. Uh, they, they really are. And I am just also so glad for Ben Bess's sake that this was a dub for him. Because uh, it feels a certain way when uh, your team is ahead, then you get subbed in, and then you lose, and you get subbed out, and you know, the spiel. So I uh, know it was dominant. I, I love what you pointed out there, Rose, uh, heading into this when you discussed whether or not the Winston will be played from Ben Best. In the past, it did look like the team has not been on the same page. Uh, Ben Best dying, team didn't have his back, maybe the, the, I don't know what was going on, but it looked coordinated this time around. And I love to see them looking so dominant because those are just such quality players, the, the old and the new. I think this team is really mashing together and I love the changes they've made, uh, made from stage one into stage two. And Naga is a huge part of that success. And, you know, the schizo was starting to close the, da the gap in the damage department. I think uh, Naga was only winning by 600 damage on that final map. Exodial was out damage by 1k. But the difference is the deaths. And when the deaths are so drastically different between the two teams and the damage is the same, it tells me all about focus fire. And we're talking about just Team Peps looking more and more coordinated because they know, you said so, they have the talent. The talent is there to revive an old game. <laughs> But it's how you work Never together. Died. Overwatch is a team-based game, and Team Pips are proving that they worked a lot on that between stages one and two to improve that. It's not even just the team-based game, but this particular meta has been like heavily team-based and, and synergy-focused. If you're not on the same page, then you aren't going to be able to get those team fight wins, and I think we were able to see that firsthand, what it looks like to have that coordination versus not in this matchup. So uh, Team Peps like definitely feel like they're vibing and gelling together as a team, and still able to have those individual moments where you go, right, like Exodeal, really great standout player brand new essentially to the competitive scene but still putting up some very impressive numbers Oh, Exodeal, yeah, very impressive. He was diffing through most of that, whether it was on the Sojourn, but even just switching to the Cassidy. He knew what hero to play on one ma on what map, just understanding how much space he needed. If it was a larger map, he would go Sojourn. If there was high grounds he needed to get to, a Sojourn. Cassidy on the smaller maps, and he delivered on those big plays. And even when he would have maybe slightly less damage than Avil, it was him playing his life that mattered. Even at that first clip, like he's not going out and trying to 1v5. Here, everyone is cor being corralled into the Deadeye. Exodial is being set up for success by his team, and he's never missed a rotation. No, and I think the other thing that's been so fun to watch about Exodial is, like, this guy has a physics degree or something because the arcs <laughs> on those magnates, just the consistent headshots and damage that he's been able to do really set up this team for success in the Tracer versus Tracer as well. You need to have those mag grenades those, uh, <laughs> and just to be able to help hinder the Tracer. Uh, you know? Yeah, physics. <laughs> I got wide. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do be wide. I keep I happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I completely agree, and it's just so great to see this opportunity in the OWCS for those new players to emerge and take the scene, uh, and you know go 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 step in no. step. Is that a word? Uh, with like <laughs> people that we know uh, or have known for a very long time uh, to play at the top of the game. I mean, Abel has been around for a long time, right? So for Exojo to just come in and be like, I can do that too. Watch me. So, um, yeah, it's great stuff, great stuff. And generally, I just love those mixed teams with, like, new players, old players, everyone coming together. And with the power of friendship, they get it done. They have gotten it done, though. They are qualified for the main event. They didn't manage that last time. I think very much that Team Peps expectations were very high on this squad. Just, you know, by name recognition alone for the org, but also for the players which are playing uh, for them. So them not making it to the main event in stage one, I'm pretty sure 
there was a lot of disappointment from everyone involved. So it's great to see them rocking up stage two, making the adjustments during that break and then coming out uh, swinging. They didn't have the easiest group either. Ensa is in their group or Ens, or like I'm not entirely sure who's saying it, however, <laughs> yeah. which way. I'm saying Ensa because I'm so European and I'm almost certain that's how you say it. Alas. Sure. Do, do, uh, you, I trust you. Do I, I'm just going to trust, trust you. I, <laughs> please do not do that. <laughs> this, uh, word, word of warning. Um, we are actually uh, now ready to have a quick chat with uh, one of the players from the winning team. I believe FD God is with us. He is FD God, oh. long time no see. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm doing good, and you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, we got very, very excited to see you guys rocking up at this stage and looking so very dominant. Now, this was a rematch. You've played against the one and army, of course, already in your opening match in the group stage. And that was also a 3-0 stump. Uh, so I assume you must have felt very confident coming into today's match and assuming you knew this is going to be a win. Did you and the team even consider to maybe experimenting a little bit with your compositions, given the recent changes, or did you not touch any of that? Uh, no, we still came for to win the match. Uh, we knew it was a <laughs> quite easy match, but we, we still uh, come to win the match, and we had to put um, uh, Yoam and Ben uh, to have some playtime, because we knew it was uh, possible to, to, to beat them with, with Ben and Yoam. But uh, for the competition wise, uh, we just kept uh, to what we practice. Uh, it's glad to see Ben and the rest of the team do so well. Thanks for taking the time to do the interview, FD God. Uh, and I could tell you guys were having fun, but we have a conspiracy theory. Did Tread jump off the map on Sigma with the grass rocks <laughs> on Sanctum? Or did he, was uh, that an oopsie? I, I need to know. I don't know what happened. I just saw uh, my Sigma just the uh, flux and say, oh. And uh, it just dead uh, into, into the map. I okay. don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see it. Oh, but I just did some uh, crazy stuff. <laughs> and Shred, Shred was shooting bodies too. Is he, does that get him fired up to uh, BM the other team? Or what's up with Shred? Well, I, I don't know. He's, uh, he's a kind of guy that uh, do his own stuff. I, 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 I can't stop <laughs> him. Okay. <laughs> How has it felt, FD God, with some of these roster changes in between stage one and two? And how confident are you all feeling heading into the main event next weekend? Um, personally, I feel really confident with my new team. Um, we did some changes between stage one and stage two. Uh, I feel like I can we have um, a really strong uh, team right now with, uh, with the new teammates we have. Uh, we do a really good uh, result in scream, even in matches against us. And I think we can go really, really far uh, into, into this stage. Maybe uh, go for the Dallas uh, stage, Dallas to LAN, I hope. That's right, yeah. that's right. Yeah, we want to see you on LAN for sure. <laughs> and just one last question, just to follow up on that, because the team that knocked you out last stage from the main event was Ex Oblivione. Are you surprised to not see them in the main event this stage? Yeah, I'm quite uh, surprised. Honestly, I didn't expect them to uh, to not qualify for top eight. I mean, they did, they had uh, some trouble in scream, but I didn't expect them to to lose like an now. Um, but it's good for us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Probably not sad about that one. Well, we're super excited to see you and the team making it to the main event. Epico, thank you so much for joining me, and we can't wait to see more of you in the squad next week. Uh, thank you.